Hi, this is Jeff. In this video, we're going to create a new tournament and show you some of the functionality around the new features related to player registration and seating. So let's get going with a new tournament. So let's put this for tonight at 8 p.m. We'll manage payouts, we'll manage the players. Uh, let's expect around 14 players. Four hours is fine. Maybe change the chip stack, 5,000. Maybe no antis this time, but we'll leave the rebuys in. Buy-in, let's put it at 25, and create the tournament. So here's our new tournament created. One difference here you'll see is that now it shows the number of expected players. That number is gonna be used to calculate the blind structure, and the number of registered players. Currently there's no one registered, I just created it. Uh, I'm the tournament director. I can either just manage the tournament, or I can also play myself if I want to play and I click register and now I'm registered. All the other members of the club, if they've joined the club and are members, can do that as well. They can uh, see the, the same listing of tournaments on their screen and they'll be able to register for the tournament. This will take some of the administrative tasks off the director of the tournament. So let's open this up. We're back to the blind structure screen. This is similar to what we saw before. On the left, everything's the same, except there's a new tab, the Players tab. Let's take a look at that. So here's the players, the list of players. Uh, this here is listed in alphabetical order. I'm the only one listed um, because I'm the only one registered. And on the right, we'll see the parameters again. So uh, we have a max players if you want to limit re registration to a certain number of players. The players per table, this is for the seat draw. And extra seats to hold. If you want to, if you're ready to get going, but you know there's going to be some stragglers, uh, and you're ready to draw seats, you can put in some extra seats to hold to make sure that uh, you have enough tables uh, for the late arrivals. So now let's add in some players because playing by myself is not going to be that fun. So we have two tabs here: the create new and club member. So the club member tab will list all the uh, current members of our of my club that have not yet registered for this tournament on their own. Since I'm the only one member of the club at the moment, we don't see anybody here, but it would be simply selecting them and clicking register. Uh, on the new tab is where you can add ad hoc players' names. So let's add in a few players to play with. Tom. And I'll pause this real quick and fill out the rest of the field. So now magically, we've added our players and we're up to 14 players registered. That's a good number. Uh, let's play this shorthanded. We'll do a shorthand turn, five players per table. So now we're ready to go. We don't expect any late arrivals. Um, and we're gonna do this draw, the seat draw. So we click on the seat draw and now with the application has added us a new tab, the seating tab, and will give gives us our seating chart. So table one and table two are full with five spots. Table three has one open spot. Um, so we do have one spot for a late arrival. So in this case, even though there's a players already seated, if let's say um, uh, another player uh, arrives, we can always add them in. Let's say it's Byron that's coming. We would register them and they received a seat assignment, table three, seat five. Okay. So now we have uh, all five tables are full and on the seating tab, we can see the, the seating assignments. So uh, from here, uh, we still have the payout screen as before. Um, right now we're paying three places out of 15, like I said, you can always change this. Maybe add, play, add a fourth paid place. Maybe in a fifth, since it's a rebuy tournament, there might be more money in the pot. Whatever you're comfortable with. We go to the clock and get the tournament started, as before. Now, um, a difference here when we're managing players is we don't have the uh, elimination and rebuy and add-on buttons directly on the clock, that is done from the player screen. So uh, 
as we've stated before, with the new version, you can manage this from a separate device. So you can leave the clock on display for all users and from a separate device, a tablet or a mobile device, for example, you can go to the players tab for the tournament on that device and manage knockouts, manage rebuys and so forth. So for each player in the list, we have actions associated with them. So let's say Doyle uh, takes an early rebuy. We click there. And now you know we can do some rebuys for some other players. And on the payouts, you'll see that the rebuys are being calculated and the payout structure is calculated accordingly. Okay. So let's maybe add, throw in a couple add-ons. There we go. Now, uh, some of the other actions here are elimination and unregister. Unregister is when there's a mistake or the person doesn't show up. You can unregister them from the tournament. Uh, elimination is when they actually get knocked out. Uh, if they lose all their chips during the rebuy period and are going to rebuy, you don't click elimination. You just click rebuy. Okay. So now let's see what happens when we start knocking out some of these players. So let's see. Uh, I don't want to see Doyle go out yet. Let's say JC goes out. Okay, so now we look at the table screen. Ta table three now only has four players. So what happens if another person from table three gets knocked out? Let's say it's me that it gets knocked out. With this lineup, that probably would be po very possible. So now I've been eliminated. There's only three players on table three and it says that the tables are unbalanced. I've got a new button that's appeared uh, that allows me to balance the table. So let's click this and see what happens. Scott has been moved from table three to seat two. Okay, so this is, has been moved to table three, seat two. So if we go back to the seating chart, uh, we'll see that now the tables are balanced. So it's a couple open seats, but still uh, no major disparities. So now as players get knocked out, we may have tables unbalanced again, more new seat assignments. And as we get down to 10 players, we're going to see that we're going to need a table break. Okay, 10 players left in the tournament, five per table. That means we only need two tables. We can eliminate the, the table three. So the way this will work is the table with the highest number will always break first. So uh, this way you can always plan out your room uh, to consolidate the tables in a certain order and you always know the order that they're going to break. Okay, so we need a table break. Let's click on the table, table break icon. Now it says, I get a message saying that it's breaking table three and here's the new seat assignments for each of the players that were left at that table. Now if we go to the seating chart, we see that tables are once again balanced and in order. Okay, so now let's look at what's coming up next. Looks like uh, the payouts for this tournament are paying the final table. So let's, uh, let's get down to the final table. So we'll quickly eliminate some others. And as we get down here to five, it's the final table draw. Uh, so instead of just doing uh, table balancing, or breaking table two, we're going to redraw the seats for the final table. So I click on redraw seats, it takes us to our seating screen and we see where everyone is placed. Okay. And now we're in the money. So if the next person eliminated is going to receive a payout. So we can here see Scott received a payout of 35 uh, for this tournament. Vanessa gets 50, Byron 75, Victor 120, and our winner for this tournament is Jennifer winning 195. And uh, on the clock, uh, the payouts are here. We see the leaderboard where people finish, and the clock has stopped because the tournament has been completed.